Hi, I'm Mark Allison. You might remember me from such blog posts as Dude, Where's My Button? and Putting Dogs in Love Hearts. In case you're thinking that was a joke, um, Dude, Where's My Button? was published in September 2018 and explored how elevation animations on a button could cause it to disappear under certain circumstances. And in July 2014, I published Irregular Shapes Part 4, which looked at you guessed it, how to put a dog into a love heart. For this video, we'll be completely dog free from here onwards. and um, We're going to look at how to get started using RenderScript. Before we get stuck into the code, it's worth a quick explanation of why RenderScript can be useful. Modern smartphones are incredibly powerful devices and the CPUs they contain get faster and more powerful every year. But along with these processor improvements, the displays also get bigger and the resolution increases. For example, the display on a Pixel 4 XL is 1,440 pixels wide by 3,040 pixels high. That's a total of almost 4.4 million pixels. When it comes to generating the images to display that on the screen, it requires a lot of processing. And even the powerful CPU isn't able to do that. The problem with CPUs is that they need to perform a wide variety of tasks and as a consequence they're not optimized to do any specific one. This is compounded on mobile CPUs because even though they're multi-core processors not all of the cores are, are of equal specification as they would be on the CPU of a desktop computer. The reasoning for this is having different cores running at different clock speeds means that when the device is sleeping there need only be a single low clock speed core running and this will have relatively small power demands. But as the user wakes the device and starts using apps then other more powerful and more power hungry cores can be spun up to meet the processing demands. For this reason the chipset on modern smartphones contains a graphics processing unit or GPU. A GPU is a processor that is specifically designed for these kinds of operations. It typically consists of a large number of arithmetic logic units, or ALUs, which are designed to perform simple arithmetic operations extremely quickly. The Adreno 640, for example, which is the GPU in the Pixel 4 XL, has 384 ALUs and is capable of a staggering 9.4 gigapixels per second fill rate. The fill rate is the number of texture map elements that it can map to pixels in a second. So the GPU is an extremely high performance device that is tailored to arithmetic computations and transformations upon large data sets that can be broken down into discrete units, in this case individual pixels. Despite its name suggesting that it's only usable for graphics, the GPU could also be leveraged to perform other kinds of digital signal processing, such as manipulating audio samples. It's worth mentioning that we're going to look at RenderScript because it's an Android specific mechanism for performing work on the GPU. But the same can also be achieved using other graphics APIs such as OpenGL or Vulkan. With that stat heavy explanation out of the way, let's turn our attention to how we can make use of this. As a somewhat contrived example, we have an image which has been inverted by some evil designer. At this point, I must confess that the evil designer is actually me. Uh, I deliberately inverted the image before importing it into the project because it would have been a very short video if the image had worked perfectly. So the challenge is to invert the image again before we render it. I've chosen image inversion here because it's actually a really simple transformation as we shall see shortly. I wanted to focus on the details of how to offload this processing to the GPU rather than go into a detailed explanation of image processing algorithms. The code that we have already set up consists of a very simple image processor interface which has a single process image method. Our activity uses coroutines to take the image loading and processing off of the main thread and creates two separate image processor instances. The second of these is the render script one which will receive the most attention in a moment but the first performs the image inversion in the JVM running on the CPU.
So we'll use this as a benchmark to understand precisely what performance benefits we get from using RenderScript. Looking at the implementation, we can see that it first creates a new bitmap with the same dimensions and bitmap config as the source image. Then it runs two nested loops to iterate through every single pixel of the image, and at the innermost point we get a pixel from the source bitmap, invert it, and then set it on the output bitmap. The invert function is what performs the transformation on each pixel. It subtracts each of the red, green, and blue components of the color from the maximum unsigned char value and returns the resulting color value. It's worth noting that the transformation itself does not contain any really complex calculations. But if we run this on my test device, which is a Pixel 2 XL, this takes a little over a second to run. The reason that this takes so long is that the image is 1,225 pixels wide by 816 pixels high. And this is a total of 999,600 pixels or just shy of 1 million pixels. So this invert function is actually being invoked almost 1 million times in the course of processing this image. Doing this 1 million times in around a second is still pretty fast, but that is happening on the CPU. So in theory, we should be able to speed things up a little if we do it on the GPU instead. Let's start by creating the actual script that will perform the image processing. In our main source set, we create a folder named RS, which is where the build toolchain expects to find render script scripts. Inside this, we create a package which matches the package of the app, in this case, com.stylingandroid.invertimage, and in here, we create a file named invert.rs. The render script files must be created within your main application package and not as part of a library module. This file is a C language file. Specifically, it needs to be the C99 dialect, but the general semantic rules of C apply. Because this is actually a render script file, we need a couple of Pragma declarations. The first indicates the version of render script being used. There's only ever been one version of render script up to this point, so we specify version 1 here. The second pragma specifies the package name under which the JVM components will be generated. And once again, this matches the package name of our sample app. Next, we define a mapping kernel, which is a function that will perform the transformation on a single value. And we need to specify the RS underscore kernel property on this function prototype to identify this as a mapping kernel rather than an invocable function. We'll discuss this in a little more depth later on. This mapping kernel receives a uchar4 input value, along with two further arguments for the x and y position of the pixel being processed. But we have no need for them here. The input value will be transformed to a uchar4 output value. Uchar4 is an array of four unsigned character values, and these are typically used to hold ARGB values. RenderScript defines some useful accessor attributes which we can use to consistently access the individual elements of this array. In this case, we do not wish to perform any processing on the alpha value, but for the red, green, and blue values, we want to subtract the input value from the maximum value of an unsigned char to get the result. With all that done, the calculated out value is returned. This is functionally identical to the invert function that we saw in the Kotlin example. And this is the transformation code, which will actually run on the GPU. Once we have successfully built the project, we're able to look inside the build folder to see the code that was generated from this. First, we have a file named invert bit code and this contains the bit code which will actually run on the GPU. We do not interact with this directly, but it's worth pointing out that it's there. The other file contains a Java class named script C underscore invert. We don't need to understand the internals of this, but this is the component that we'll actually have to instantiate later on to obtain an instance of the script that we can use for the image processing. Now let's turn our attention to the RenderScript image processor 
which is the render script equivalent of the native Kotlin image processor we looked at earlier. Currently, this simply returns the source bitmap, but now let's update this to use the invert kernel that we just created. We'll add some arguments to this class. Firstly, an Android context, and also a lifecycle owner. We'll use the first for some initialization in a moment, and the second is so that we can respond to lifecycle events to ensure that we clean up after ourselves when things are no longer needed. We'll also implement the lifecycle observer interface to facilitate this. The first thing that we need to do is register for a lifecycle callback, and then create a listener to get invoked when the lifecycle owner is destroyed. We'll populate the body of this method later on. Next, we need to create some fields. The first of this is the render script context, which is responsible for initialization, resource management, and teardown. Typically, this is quite expensive to create and tear down, so it's best to create a single instance and reuse it. It is very important to destroy it when we no longer need it to avoid leaks. Next, we create a script instance that is actually an instance of the generated script C underscore invert class that we looked at earlier. And this takes the render script context as an argument. I'll also destroy this when appropriate. Technically, we don't have to do this because destroying the render script context should destroy this too. However, I think it's good practice to destroy any potentially expensive objects we create explicitly, and so I've done so here. Next, we create two late init vars, which are allocation objects. An allocation is essentially a block of shared memory through which data can be passed to and from render script kernels. We'll also create a late init bitmap, which will be used to return the output of the image processing. We'll create a function to destroy these allocations, but only if they've been initialized. We may need to destroy and recreate these throughout the life of the image processor instance, and we'll look at this in a moment. But being good citizens, we'll call this in our onDestroy method, even though destroying the render script context should also destroy these allocations as well. Now we'll look at the process image method, which will be invoked to perform the image processing. First, we'll check that the input allocation has been initialized and whether its size is different from the source bitmap. If it is the same size as the source bitmap, then we can reuse it. But otherwise, we'll need to destroy it and create new instances of both input and output allocations, along with the output bitmap, which will match the source bitmap. Creating these objects is, once again, quite expensive. So if we can reuse existing objects, then we really should. Next, we copy the data from the source bitmap into the input allocation. Next, we call for each underscore root on our script instance, passing both the input and output allocations as arguments. This one line is where we invoke the mapping kernel that we created earlier. It looks pretty simple, but there's actually a lot going on here. Internally, it's iterating through the data in the input allocation, and for each pixel, it is invoking our kernel on the GPU to perform the mapping, and then setting the corresponding pixel on the output allocation to the result. This is essentially the same as the nested for loops in the Kotlin version, but it's done for us. Now we copy the data from the output allocation to the output bitmap, and then return it. And we're done. Much of the effort here is actually getting everything set up. And once that's all done, the processing operation itself is to copy the source data to the input allocation, run the script, and then copy the output allocation to the output bitmap. If we run this, it performs exactly the same image processing in 15 milliseconds. This is significantly faster than the inversion performed in the JVM on the CPU, around 70 times faster, in fact. But that's not the whole story. This is actually slowed down by the fact that we have to create the allocations when we run this for the first time. 
In my tests, I've invoked this a second time with the same size image where the allocations can be reused and it runs in about 5 milliseconds. That is well over 200 times faster than on the CPU. While inverting images isn't something we'd often have reason to do within Android apps, the performance gains that we can get from performing computationally expensive tasks on the GPU are pretty compelling. Hopefully this introduction to RenderScript has given you a, a basic knowledge to get something up and running so that you can start tinkering with RenderScript yourself. Thanks for watching and stay safe.